One, two, and three. As you guys can tell, I'm an Oppo fanboy. This is actually my first Android phone and it has been four years with me, but it still works with me. The battery life has suffered a bit. What I really like about Oppo is that their screen is pretty nice. I just like how the color reproduction from Oppo screen is. What's going on guys? So today, we are going to review the Oppo Reno7 Pro 5G. So with me here, I have the Oppo Reno7 Pro 5G with the brand new flagship sensor of the IMAX 766 on the front and the selfie camera of the IMAX 709. Both of them are flagship sensor, meaning that they are the best of the best. I have this phone for about one week now and I want to tell you guys all of my overall experience using this phone. Alright, let's talk about the unboxing of this phone. So basically, you get this box when you open the box that is the manual which no one reads. It comes with a very good clear case. So it comes with a SIM ejector tool. After that, you will see your phone which wraps in this plastic cover and the most surprising part is that it comes with a 65 watt charger. Pretty fast. It has to come with the 65 watt charger because nowhere else sells any 65 watt charger. So that's why they actually include it inside the box which charges my phone pretty fast. Now, I use that 65 watt charger to charge all of my stuff. Yes, a USB-C, volume rocker on the left side and a power button on the right side. And has two stereo mic. And there's a speaker at the bottom and also a speaker at the top. The SIM card tray is over at the bottom and it charges via USB-C. I like the new design of it. There's a very big camera bump over here which when you put it on a flat surface, it actually like rocks a bit. Let's talk more about the specification of this phone. In short, this is a very good photography phone at an incredible quality. Let's talk about the colors of this phone. It comes in Star Trail Blue and also Star Trail Black. And also there's like a so-called limited edition color which is the League of Legends color. Oppo collaborated with League of Legends to create this blue and black kind of color. Turned out to be nice. And also I saw on online there is like this gold color Oppo Reno7 Pro 5G which I didn't get the hand of it. So you got the blue color model over here which is like this bluish purple kind of look. Like some parts of it is blue, some parts of it is purple. Which I pretty like the color. It's pretty euphoric I would say. And it's pretty pleasing to my eye. Let's talk about the battery life. So you have a 4500 mAh battery and it can last me around 12 hours on a heavy use. What I mean by heavy use, I play a lot of CPU intensive game on this phone which can last me roughly around 12 hours. If I'm not using this heavily, I can last it a good roughly 15 hours. It comes with a 65 watt charger which supports fast charging which charges it from 0 to 100% in 1 hour and 15 minutes. The price of this phone is 999 SGD compared to the Oppo Reno6 Pro 5G which costs 949 and the Reno Pro 5G which costs 899. So yeah, this is on the pricier end. So let's talk about the design of this new Oppo Reno7 Pro 5G. So the design, as you guys can see, it has a box shaped design which follows like the brand new iPhone 13 look which is a lot more boxier. With this design, it has a better grip on my hand which I really like. It gives a good grip while I'm playing game too. It feels good in the hand. What I like about this new design is that because of its squared off design, it can actually stand up on the table quite easily. Right here, I can actually stand it up on my hand if I can balance it on my hand. Actually, I can balance it. Look at that. Okay, never mind. On its website, it has no official IP rating. I can pretty sure tell you that it has an IPX4 which means that it's splash and dust proof. It's actually not waterproof so don't put this underwater. The first thing that you'll notice when you take this phone out of the box is that you'll feel that it is pretty light. It weighs around 180 grams which is pretty light for our phone. So let's talk about the display. It runs on an AMOLED 90Hz display which supports HDR10 Plus and has a 89.4% screen to body ratio. It has a peak brightness of 920 nits. The HDR video on this phone is quite alright. And it has a 90Hz display which is not up to the modern standard right now. The modern standard right now is actually 120Hz but I see no difference between 120Hz and 90Hz. To me, it doesn't make a lot of difference because when I run my game, it still runs on 60fps and not 120fps. So it doesn't make a lot of a difference. But it do make a difference when I'm scrolling on website. I can feel like the difference between 60Hz and 90Hz. 90Hz is slightly more smoother. Like you know the saying, once you go to a faster refresh rate, you can never go back to 60Hz which is kind of true. So it comes with a CPU of the MediaTek Dimensity 1200 Max 5G and a GPU of the ARM G77MC9 which is quite good per se for a mid-range phone. I played some Mobile Legends game and also Rocket League and it seems to handle it pretty okay. When I play intensive game with this, I have never overcome any like overheating issues and it always run on a comfortable 40 degrees Celsius at most and I've never been higher than 40 degrees Celsius on the Mac. It's running on the operating system of the Android 11 and ColorOS 12. I wish it runs on Android 12, the latest Android version. This is Oppo's ColorOS, Oppo own operating system which runs pretty smooth. So I have the 256GB storage version and has 12 gigabyte of RAM. And inside the settings, I can actually boost it up to 7 gigabyte. It sort of runs on 19 gigabyte of RAM, which is quite fast for a phone. So yeah, I can actually run a lot of heavy duty games on this. So right here, you guys can see that I can actually press the RAM expansion. So when I press it, I can choose to whether use either choose
choose 3 gigabyte, 5 gigabyte, or 7 gigabyte. Which I'm gonna choose 7 gigabyte because it's the most. But 19 gigabytes on a phone is quite overkill to me, to be honest. I'm gonna put it on the settings because why not? Okay, so let's talk about the camera on this phone. That's what I'm most excited about because it has a flagship sensor. So it has a triple camera system and it has a 50 megapixel main camera, which is quite fast at f1.8. It has face detection autofocus and has a flagship sensor of the IMX 766 and a dedicated color temperature sensor on the rear of the device. And also it has an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, which is quite okay in my opinion. And has a 2 megapixel running at f2.4 macro camera. To be honest, it's not pretty great, but it's a great feature to have. Now it's actually 824. I want to try out the night mode on this phone. Let's do night photography. I'm going to turn off the light first. So now it's pretty dark. I only have my fairy lights turned on. Let's try out the night mode. Let's try the wide angle lens. Alright, the ultra wide angle lens works quite well. It has a better quality on the main camera, better clarity. Lah. Let's compare it to the Oppo Reno 2Z, which is a two years old camera. So let's try it out. Okay, let's try the ultra wide. The Oppo Reno 7 Pro 5G has a better ultra wide angle lens. And on the main camera, the Oppo Reno 7 Pro 5G still wins, which is not a surprise because it's a newer camera. Better blacks and everything. It has better quality. Yeah, not a surprise to be honest. Right, as you guys can see that the Oppo Reno 7 Pro 5G has a better night mode, which has better quality overall. I'm pretty stoked with this phone. It has a selfie camera and it has 32 megapixel at f2.4, which is quite impressive in my opinion. 32 megapixel is quite high. And has an impressive IMX 709, which has been co-developed by Oppo and Sony, which means that it is a very good selfie camera lah. So I have the camera on right now over here as you guys can see. Okay, let's try taking a selfie right here. Okay, okay. Honestly, it's quite sharp. You guys can see like the details on my pimples and everything. That is a selfie camera. Let's try the front facing camera. I'm gonna change it to the 50 megapixel mode. But it takes a 50 megapixel picture. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, okay, I'm pretty liking it. And the colors is slightly much more accurate and it's a lot more sharper, like, to be honest. Okay, let's talk about the video capabilities. It runs on 4K, 30 frames per second. It also has a feature of 1080p at 30 frames, 60 frames, or 120 frames. It does 4K, 30 frames per second, but it doesn't have 24 frames per second, which I need to have that cinematic look or so-called natural look. Only when it runs at 1080p that it has stabilization. And if you're shooting on 4K, there isn't any stabilization, which is quite bad for a handheld shot. If one day I decided to drink coffee on that day, the video will be, like, shaky without any Stabilization. We are near the main road. Like, how does the quality sound like? So, right now I'm using the Oppo Reno 7 Pro 5G. This is an ultra wide angle on a 1080p timeline. Let me try to switch to my Apple, which shoots at ultra wide angle 4K. So, this is how it looks like. How does it compare? This is a side by side review. Hopefully, it works quite well. Mind you that Oppo Reno 7 Pro on the ultra wide has a stabilization, while iPhone 11 doesn't have that much of a stabilization. And how does it look like? And how does the sound quality sound like? And it has a slow mo feature 1080p at 480 frames per second and 720p at 900. 60 frames per second. It is a good feature to have but I wouldn't know when will I ever need 960 frames per second. Alright, now I'm going to show you guys what audio can you expect from this phone. So let's cut to that. Okay, now you're hearing from the Oppo Reno 7 Pro 5G and this is how it sounds like. I'm going to compare it to the iPhone 11 audio quality. This is what you guys can expect. This is how the iPhone 11 sounds like and this is how the Oppo Reno 7 Pro 5G sounds like. It's kind of windy right now so the sound quality won't be that good but this is how you guys can expect from the sound quality from both I'm gonna switch like within both of them hopefully it sounds good this is how it both sounds like lah basically today we went to Tanjung Paga District Park and after that we went to Vivo City that's all and yeah basically that's it I will end the video over here I will see you guys when I get back home and after I review it let's go okay let's talk about the speakers this is the first ever Oppo Reno series that has stereo speakers which is pretty awesome it's quite controversial from there so in my opinion the stereo speakers are not really that equal not bad sort of like when you watch like a show on YouTube or like music on this phone it's a lot more louder on the bottom end of the phone than the on the top end of the phone which I don't really like because it's not balanced it's like louder on my right ear and like softer on my left ear I don't know whether it's the phone or because of me maybe like my left ear is a bit deaf I'm not so sure about that but I'm pretty sure it's the phone though I'm not really sure man no pop, all I do is rap though want me on your song throw a couple stats yo Woo! everybody wanna do the same thing yo that's why flow like water so I'm going mainstream Flow like water, so I'm going mainstream. Flow like water, so I'm going mainstream. Woo! 
it is very light there's a lot of echo to it it doesn't have that bass sound that i want there's too much air to it so let's talk about the security features it has fingerprint under display which is optical so i just put my hand over here and it was unlocked and it unlocks quite fast with facial recognition using camera which works quite fast in fact the facial recognition works fast in a bright environment but in a pitch black environment it doesn't work quite as fast as compared to in bright environment that's pretty much it i actually made a full vlog with this phone i brought this phone with me to an art exhibition located at tanjung paga district park which you guys can watch the vlog over here overall i wouldn't use this as a day-to-day -day phone i'll stick to the flagship like the oppo find x3 pro which has a better cpu and a better camera quality for a mid-range phone this is quite good which is flagship sensor and it's very good in low light this is a very very good phone oppo was kindly enough to send me this so this is a review unit which i have to send back soon in like two days thank you oppo for sending over your products for me to review it thank you so much if you guys want to get this phone you guys can see all the link in the description box down below i think that's the end of this video if you guys want to support me you guys can click the link in the description box down below and until then i'll see you guys in my next video bye bye